All right, what is up guys? Uh, so in this video, I'm actually gonna be deadlifting. I haven't deadlifted in a, in a while, uh, mainly because my main focus has been uh, bodybuilding, hypertrophy training. However, I made the decision that I'm gonna try to qualify for official strongman games, which is a strongman competition uh, where a lot of the pros will compete against each other. And I'm gonna also go in probably as a 105 kg, which means I have to be under uh, 231. Okay, so right now I'm about 250. Uh, so I've cut from about 272 to 250. I'm gonna try to maintain that and then do a water cut. Uh, but to qualify, you have to do a five rep max deadlift. Uh, so I wanna try integrating this back into my training. Today's a pull day, so I figured start off uh, the session with some deadlifts. And the whole topic of this video, if you guys watch the title, is gonna be, uh, you know, why is there a stigma that deadlifts are bad for your back? You know, and is it true? Is it not true? So we'll dive into that. Uh, but I'm just gonna start warming up. You know, nothing crazy here. Probably just working uh, some sets of five here, get some blood flow uh, back into, uh, <laughs> pun, uh, into the movement. And also uh, just get more familiar with the movement pattern of the deadlift. So nothing crazy, but it's gonna be fun. So let's get to it. So what you guys are seeing is, uh, well, first of all, if you wanna know how to warm up for your deadlift, link right here. Uh, that's what I did prior to what you see now. Uh, but then I just get on the barbell, I'm doing like 15, 20 reps, uh, kind of just some stiff leg deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, just to get blood flow to the back, hamstrings, kind of fine tune some uh, technique patterns in my brain. Then I went to 135, and for all these sets, uh, basically 135, 225, 315, 365 to 405, I was doing double overhand um, just to work on my grip strength. So that's something that's a weakness of mine. And it also helps limit the amount of weight I can put on the bar because I am getting back into it, right? My ego wants to kick in right away and kind of push it. But to hold myself back, stick with double overhand, I only switched to hook grip for the last couple reps of each of the sets at 405. So that's kind of what you guys are seeing here. It's a great back primer. Uh, like I said, just getting prepped for the strawman competition. Um, however, I kind of want to talk about why the stigma exists with uh, deadlifts are being bad for you or bad for your back or uh, injury, etc. Um, but I actually want to have Coach Matt maybe kind of dive into why there may be a stigma. And then we're going to talk about is this true? And when it would be true, these are the situations. And if it's not true, kind of debunk that. So I'm going to kick it over to Coach Matt. All right, so Coach, you asked the question of why people would think a deadlift movement pattern would be bad for your back. The biggest thing I think is it's just, it visually looks bad. Even as a coach, I'd have to admit that just looking at a deadlift pattern, you're like, yeah, that could probably hurt your lower back. Of course, all the research we have for this, that this is actually a really good movement pattern for lower back health and just basic hinge patterns will be good for your lower back. But yes, visually speaking, looking at a deadlift looks injurious. And then not to help all that is all of those internet videos that you'll see with people, you know, cat back deadlifting, you know, way more than they can actually deadlift. So this kind of internet culture around deadlifting, around sharing videos of people either injuring themselves during a deadlift or people lifting way more weight than they should be lifting in the gym uh, has kind of created this awful stigma around deadlifting. So visually speaking, yes, looks terrible. Research wise, we have a whole bunch of data to support that there's nothing inherently injurious about a hinge pattern. All right. Coach Mac kicked it off perfectly. And just something I want to piggyback off of that is typically when people do get injured with a deadlift, there's a couple of reasons this may happen. And it is very nuanced, okay? So you could have someone who's super strong doing everything right, and boom, injury happens. It could be so random. But on the flip side, a lot of times what we see is people who have bad technique and bad form, and they're pushing that load way heavier than they should. And that's mainly their ego kicking in, or they just don't have someone uh, who's properly coaching them, okay, and giving them instruction on when to do that weight at the proper time, okay? So that may be the issue. The other issue is if there are already uh, warning signs ahead, okay? So if someone's been deadlifting, right, and they feel like they have some lower back stuff going on, or there's a tweak, et cetera, and they just keep pushing and not listening to their body, which is trying to protect them, 
right? Injury can occur. Um, it's not the movement, okay? Just like Matt said, the movement is fine and perfect uh, to develop a big, strong back. And if you do this right with progressive overload and you're handling the proper amount of load, you're gonna build that back to be super strong and resilient to all the things that we have mentioned. The other big thing uh, when it comes to deadlifting is gonna be that, that rounding, right? This rounding that happens and people think you're in Snap City or this isn't good. And for the most part, uh, when we go to maximal loads, there is going to be some upper back rounding and that's gonna be okay, right? We've built up resilience over time if we've been doing it properly, that those muscles are just being worked. Now, yes, at any point there is uh, a degree at which it could become problematic, but if you're a smart lifter and you're doing it for the right time, you know when that occurs. And if you have a coach, the coach's job is to, to give you uh, proper feedback on where you're at in that whole deadlift journey. So what we're trying to convey here, guys, is don't be afraid to deadlift. Okay, deadlifts are great, and all different deadlift variations uh, are fantastic as well. Maybe you don't want to do conventional deadlifts for whatever reason, that's okay. Try trap bar, try stiff leg deadlifts, try Romanian deadlifts, but inherently there's nothing wrong with the movement itself. Uh, so just some advice on the deadlift. Uh, we're gonna transfer over and I'm just gonna go through the, the rest of my back uh, hypertrophy session and give you guys some tips as we go through that. Right, guys so when it comes to bodybuilding i do think machines and equipment matter because when it comes to uh aesthetically trying to build your body you do want to hit certain muscle groups a little bit differently right to get their proper stimulus so something that uh we had got in the gym that really has made a difference for back development is all these different uh grip attachments so uh these are basically i think it's like mag grip uh but we have like a wide one we have a middle one we have a close grip and one they're super comfortable like on your hands and the grip placement and it really allows you to either hit like the lats or the center of the back. So specifically for me, uh, you know, I really want to develop a wider back and also the middle of my back. So I've been really falling in love with this for the mid uh, back and then using the extra wide attachment, uh, which also changes hand placement. So I'm having my grip out here, which you can see versus uh, this way. Okay, so just a little bit of grip play can really change how you're feeling that in your back. So something I noticed if you guys uh, can get these, you know, I would highly recommend purchasing. Been a great addition to the gym and everybody loves them. Tiny's getting super strong with these. I remember she started off with just a 45 and actually had two plates, bringing out 15 reps. Um, another quick back tip, guys, for training is how you structure your exercises. So if you're trying to hit the lats, right, or, or like the wide part of your back, put that first, okay? There's no point putting it last in your your workout because you're gonna fatigue so much that you can't actually put the proper uh, effort into trying to uh, grow, you know, the certain area you're trying to grow. So uh, for me, trying to get a big wide back, we're gonna start off with these these wide grip uh, pull downs. So if you guys are trying to work on the middle of your back, maybe start off with close grip and then finish up with something wider. So just how you structure your programming is gonna be a key indicator on what you're trying to emphasize uh, to get better at. Tiny did, she did 12, and rep 11 and 12, uh, we're in. Eh. So we want her to get 10 really good ones, like super under control, okay? She's getting a good stretch at the top, full range of motion, getting that bar to touch her chest every single time, and she's limiting her body English, okay? So this is a really good set. And she's got like maybe one more. Come on. Good, good, nice. So what we were talking about is a lot of people, uh, once they feel the fatigue set in, they just start going gung-ho and using body English. And the issue with body English is it's super hard to gauge that on how much was the body English uh, helping us with the rep versus the actual muscle, okay? So shout out Mike Isertel, you know, RP strength for going with the full ROM methodology that they always promote 
and limiting the amount of body English we do uh, just because it helps us be able to track our progress, right? We know we got 10 good reps uh, without using any of those outside variables. So I'm a big believer in that. And also just helps with muscular development, right? So when it comes to bodybuilding aesthetics, that's the way to go. So strong, I almost ripped my lap pull down, which would have been a disaster. Can you see it? It's shredded. Yeah, here, let's see if we can show them. Show them how to avoid a catastrophe. Oh, I don't know. This may be dangerous. Sorry, Dad. You know what's weird? Is before I did those, I literally thought in my head, what if this ever snapped on me? And I've also been having on my wish list a new lap pull down. So, I think the time has come. Uh, about fatigue management earlier uh, with using double overhand. The other way to get fatigue management is to break your machine. So that way you can no longer use it and you limit your sets to only two sets. So, next exercise is gonna be a uh, dumbbell row, okay, single arm. And something I often see when people are doing dumbbell rows is they're using their shoulder uh, and basically their arm to do the pulling instead of their lap. So something I like to think about is when I have my hand on the bench with the dumbbell, I'm gonna let my arm fully hang so I can feel the lat uh, you know, working. And then from there, I'm pulling back towards my hip, right? That's gonna give you way more lat activation versus then pulling this way, which you see a lot of. Okay, it's gonna put a lot of stress on the shoulder uh, and the arm versus driving back, right? really rowing, using the lat the way it should be properly used. All right, so after dumbbell row, uh, basically what I would have done is use the lat pull down with the closed grip to hit the middle of my back. Since it broke, I had to be a little bit creative. I'm like, okay, well, what can I do to hit the mid uh, back with what I have available? Uh, Coach Tani is actually doing it from the seated cable stack. Uh, it's too light of a stack for me to use to get the right stimulus. So I'm just gonna go to the flexion rows. Flexion rows really hit the middle of my back. Uh, so good exercise for me. We're doing three sets, uh, 10 to about 12 reps. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna do face pulls. And that pretty much is gonna conclude our back training day uh, for this day. All right, so kind of going all the way back to the beginning of the video, we talked about deadlifts and your back. Me doing flexion rows, technically, if that type of lift would be uh, injurious or harmful to me, I wouldn't be able to do that, right? So you can see that I do have upper back rounding and it's building all those muscles, making me more resilient. Now, if I were to put 405 on the bar and try to do a flexion row and I just started and my strength wasn't there, yeah, there could be problems that arise. We have to be a freaking idiot to do that. So don't be a freaking idiot and hurt yourself. Be smart, progressively overload. Okay, have some, so, some way to manage your fatigue. And that goes back to our last video that we had done, which is what bodybuilders mostly do wrong is they don't have a way to manage their fatigue and structure their programming. So that's a key tip. All right, so we're gonna wrap this thing up in a second. That'll be it. All right, guys, so there you guys have it. That's pretty much our back day. Uh, we did three sets for all the movements, about uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 reps, keeping at least two reps in the tank. Uh, so try it out, see if you like it. And the biggest thing I want to convey is don't be afraid to deadlift. Don't be afraid to train your back, okay? Try different movements. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. If you have questions, put them down in the comments section. We'll be sure to answer it. Make sure you subscribe to Coach Matt uh, on YouTube, he's behind the camera helping me out with this, so it wouldn't be possible without him. So thanks, Matt. And also with programs, snapstrength.net. Okay, head over there. We have a hypertrophy program, so it takes all the thinking, you know, out of the equation. You just do it. It's regulated with fatigue management using RPE, all the sets and reps, taken care of for you. So if you're looking to put on some muscle size, uh, you know, and learn how we program, check that out. 
tons of other programs on there. And also the Iron Lions Facebook group. So just type in the Facebook search bar, the Iron Lions. Uh, ask to join, we do form checks, articles, uh, lots of Q&A style stuff in there, great community. Uh, so make sure you guys join there. Uh, but make sure you guys stay a lean, mean, strength machine. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.